Chatting to Senator Linda Reynolds today, how do you think everything went? It was pretty exciting, wasn't it? It was a fabulous way to spend International Women's Day here with some of the most amazingly innovative and courageous women in WA and agriculture. It was a fabulous afternoon. And what, what words of advice do you give to women that, are, that think they want to give it a go but haven't quite got there yet? Well, one of the messages from all five panellists is to believe in yourself, to be educated, to make sure that you understand the business you want to go into and then just go for it. You know, be per perseverant, be resilient and just give it a go. And, you know, if you get knocked over, you stand right back up again and learn the lessons and just keep on. And that's what all five women here have done today. And they're all enormously successful in the agricultural field. And I think the lesson is that women are fabulous innovators and they've got particular skill sets and characteristics that make them shine in innovation and nowhere more so than in the bush here in Australia. And was there any particular story that stood out for you today? I think they all did. Um, all of these women have amazing stories but again you know they're they and we're all women that people would just walk past in the street and not realise just how amazing these women's stories are is they just they just believed in themselves and sometimes out of necessity, you know, to feed their families or to keep their farm. They've been creative and innovative and created businesses from, you know, from, from nothing. So very inspirational way to spend International Women's Day. What did you think of today? It was outstanding on two fronts. One was the future of smart farming, precision agriculture and the exciting changes in agriculture, but the critical role of women, the absolutely understated significance of the role that women can play in innovation was great. One of the particular speakers, Mary, stressed the importance of preserving the importance of the family farm. Big money, big companies, massive technology is transforming, revolutionising agriculture and the marketing, right? And there's the shareholders and there's governments. When you come back to the communities that make up the social fabric of country, Western Australia or country Australia, that's something that has to be seriously supported with all of the funding that gets thrown around and distributed uh, because that really, as I say, goes back to the social fabric of um, you know, life in those parts of, the, of Australia. The world population is expected to reach 9.7 billion by 2050. Agriculture has a key role to play in feeding this population. But agriculture must adapt to climate change and help mitigate climate impacts. Climate Smart Agriculture is an approach that was conceived to address simultaneously climate change and food insecurity. It's not a new set of practices at the field level or at the farm level, but it's, it's a whole new approach to agricultural development policy making. It's holistic in the sense that it tries to achieve sustainable increase of agricultural production, adapting to the new realities of uh, weather patterns, and at the same time trying to capture mitigation of greenhouse gases. Climate smart agriculture needs to be context specific precisely because it's not a recipe for all. So robust evidence base has to be built to understand what are the impacts of climate change on food security in different conditions in different regions and uh, different countries. That's why we support countries in policy harmonization, where you would see both 
agriculture in the climate change policies and climate change in agriculture policies. Climate smart agriculture is also building the capacity in the countries, is also opening up the dialogue in the countries between Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Climate Change. It's very important to bring these two ministries as well as maybe Ministry of Development, Ministry of Finance together because the types of interventions climate smart agriculture requires need the support of all. A significant transformation in agricultural and food policy making is needed, especially because of the challenges of climate change. It is important to address these challenges because population is increasing now. Climate change is happening now. So we need to address them now in order to have some potential benefits before it's too late. I'm the CEO of Intergrain, which is a wheat and barley breeding business. So we develop new wheat and barley varieties for the Australian growers. But even in our business, which is a science related business, so there's many gadgets that we could talk about that we have in our warehouse. We have robotics, we have um, lots of you know, new inventions like gene editing and things like that coming into it. And I think we're actually almost on a verge of you know people understanding that we're in a world market and that that world market comes to us and we can go to it. And I always say that one of the best ways to be innovative is actually to go traveling and to immerse yourself in new concepts, new cultures and new environments because that's where you pick up some great ideas. People are starting to really get in and understand about nutrition. It's becoming important to us, but it's also, you know, so particularly in Australia, so it's such an such a solid part of our culture that, you know, I'm constantly thinking about food and, you know, how you can be more creative with it. We actually breed the wheat variety that is specifically made for the Japanese and Korean udon noodles. So if you eat an udon noodle, um, you can probably pretty much assure yourself that it's come from a wheat that's been grown in Western Australia. So we spend a lot of time looking at how we can learn to make better wheats that make better udon noodles. We're just in the middle of a conversation with Christine Sora. How are you feeling today? Really great. There's a lot of really exciting opportunities out there and I've just received some figures that said there was 4,600 jobs advertised for university graduates in agriculture and agribusiness in Australia last year. And when you consider there's 600 graduates coming through the system, that's a lot of job opportunities for those people. But it's also increasing in Western Australia as well. So there were 500 jobs advertised for graduates last year and a very small number of graduates coming through the system. So a lot of interesting opportunities for young people into the future. And where would you like to see uh, these young people and obviously, um, you know, what, what they can do with these opportunities in the next, in, in, the, in the near future? I guess there's quite a range of different things. People often they think about agriculture and agribusiness and they think I have to be on a farm. So half of these jobs are city based, half of them in rural areas, but the majority of them are off farm. So there's roles there for people advisors, there's people there who provide finance, machinery, chemicals and a lot of very high tech type jobs. So the people who've ever looked at drones, looked at you know using game controllers in playing games, there's actually people there who are setting up jobs where those skills become really important and some of those jobs have only come up in the last year or two. So a really exciting time, I guess, look at what's going on. There's a website called Career Harvest, explains all the different jobs and there's an organisation called Rimfire Resources which gives you the details on what jobs are changing each year. So between those two you get a lot more of an idea of what's going on in the sector. There are innovative ways that you can access education. So it's no longer that you have to take time out of your work and your careers to go get an education. Um, at Charles Street University they have everything is available online, plus you can come on campus two days per fortnight to get an education. What that means is that you have the opportunity to talk to industry people, they'll come and visit you but you also can get into a bus 
and go out and see what is happening. So part of the education is the theory, but it's also being applied to industry, seeing what's happening, talking to the people who are doing it, getting to speak and network with the most innovative people in your sector, and also about doing projects where you can work with those industry people, solve real problems, so that when you finish your education, you understand what's happening in the industry, and you also can start work immediately. This place was absolutely full of people, men and women, um, recognising um, obviously today's uh, uh, International Women's Day and um, we all recognised that and we also recognised all the wonderful stories that our ladies told. So it was a very good turnout, congratulations thank and thank you so much. When can, when can we see you guys again? Uh, we're doing another summit, uh, it's going to be in May uh, and that's going to be about defence. Excellent, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Fantastic. Well, I, I think Australia is right at the crossroads right now in terms of making a, a serious decision about where it sees itself going. I think if it really decides that science and innovation and technology is the future, then Australia is really, really well placed to uh, be part of the, uh, the new generation of technologies that are coming along. We have the fundamentals of a knowledge nation. We really just need to do some realignment and some restructuring to make sure that we grasp this opportunity. There is no doubt that we are deficient in certain uh, elements. Uh, that has been identified through really good solid science that uh, the universities and the, uh, the Department of Agriculture have done over many years in CSIRO. Um, once you've identified the problem you can come back and try and uh, resolve the problem. So uh, we know that there are issues in terms of our soil, we just have to treat it very, very carefully and to make sure that uh, each year we, lo we look after it well.
Very inspiring afternoon. I'm Sandy DiBrocco. We'll see you next. Available online, plus you can come on campus two days per fortnight to get an education. What that means is that you have the opportunity to talk to industry people. They'll come and visit you, but you also can get into a bus and go out and see what is happening. So part of the education is the theory, but it's also being applied to industry, seeing what's happening, talking to the people who are doing it, getting to speak and network with the most innovative people in your sector, and also about doing projects where you can work with those industry people, solve real problems, so that when you finish your education, you understand what's happening in the industry, and you also can start work immediately. This place was absolutely full of people, men and women, um, recognising um, obviously today's uh, uh, International Women's Day and um, we all recognised that and we also recognised all the wonderful stories that our ladies told. So it was a very good turnout, congratulations thank and thank you so much. When can, when can we see you guys again? Uh, we're doing another summit, uh, it's going to be in May uh, and that's going to be about defence. So. Excellent, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Fantastic. network with the most innovative people in your sector and also about doing projects where you can work with those industry people, solve real problems, so that when you finish your education you understand what's happening in the industry and you also can start work immediately. This place was absolutely full of people, men and women, um, recognising um, obviously today's uh, uh, International Women's Day and um, we all recognised that and we also recognised all the wonderful stories that our ladies told. So it was a very good turnout, congratulations thank and thank you so much. When can, when can we see you guys again? Uh, we're doing another summit, uh, it's going to be in May uh, and that's going to be about defence. So. Excellent, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Fantastic.
world market comes to us and we can go to it. And I always say that one of the best ways to be innovative is actually to go travelling and to immerse yourself in new concepts, new cultures and new environments because that's where you pick up some great ideas. People are starting to really get in and understand about nutrition. It's becoming important to us. But it's also, you know, so particularly in Australia, so it's such an such a solid part of our culture that, you know, I'm constantly thinking about food and you know how you can be more creative with it. We actually breed the wheat variety that is specifically made for the Japanese and Korean udon noodles. So if you eat an udon noodle um, you can probably pretty much assure yourself that it's come from a wheat that's been grown in Western Australia. So we spend a lot of time looking at how we can learn to make better wheats that make better udon noodles. We're just in the middle of a conversation with Christine Sora. How are you feeling today? Really great. There's a lot of really exciting opportunities out there and I've just received some figures that said there was 4,600 jobs advertised for university graduates in agriculture and agribusiness in Australia last year. And when you consider there's 600 graduates coming through the system, that's a lot of job opportunities for those people. But it's also increasing in Western Australia as well. So there were 500 jobs advertised for graduates last year and a very small number of graduates coming through the system. So a lot of interesting opportunities for young people into the future. And where would you like to see uh, these young people and obviously, um, you know, what what they can do with these opportunities in the next, in, in, the, in the near future? I guess there's quite a range of different things. People often they think about agriculture and agribusiness and they think I have to be on a farm. So half of these jobs are city based, half of them in rural areas, but the majority of them are off farm. So there's roles there for people advisors, there's people there who provide finance, machinery, chemicals, and a lot of very high tech type jobs. So the people who've ever looked at drones, looked at, you know, using game controllers in playing games, there's actually people there who are setting up jobs where those skills become really important. And some of those jobs have only come up in the last year or two. So a really exciting time. I guess look at what's going on. There's a website called Career Harvest, explains all the different jobs. And there's an organisation called Rimfire Resources which gives you the details on what jobs are changing each year. So between those two you get a lot more of an idea of what's going on in the sector. There are innovative ways that you can access education. So it's no longer that you have to take time out of your work and your careers to go get an education. Um, at Charles Street University they have everything is available online. Plus you can come on campus two days per fortnight to get an education.
Well, I, I think Australia is right at the crossroads right now in terms of making a, a serious decision about where it sees itself going. I think if it really decides that science and innovation and technology is the future, then Australia is really, really well placed to uh, be part of the uh, the new generation of technologies that are coming along. We have the fundamentals of a knowledge nation. We really just need to do some realignment and some restructuring to make sure that we grasp this opportunity. There is no doubt that we are deficient in certain uh, elements. Uh, that has been identified through really good solid science that uh, the universities and the, uh, the Department of Agriculture have done over many years in CSIRO. Um, once you've identified the problem you can come back and try and uh, resolve the problem. So uh, we know that there are issues in terms of our soil, we just have to treat it very, very carefully and to make sure that uh, each year we, lo we look after it well.